Welcome to the Sleep Experience Podcast, where we take a deep dive into the latest sleep hacks, gadgets, and strategies to skyrocket your productivity to new heights. Being a high performer is all about resting at 100% so you can execute at 100%. Hey, this is Riley, host of the Sleep Experience Podcast. At the Sleep Experience Podcast, we interview health experts and teach our community how upgrading their sleep is the one thing that they need to unlock their biological code, biological code to maximize performance in an effortless way by doing more with less. Do you want to become a productivity machine, have genius ideas automatically pop into your mind, stop feeling so stressed, build better relationships, and generate more income? Optimizing your deep sleep can do just that. Visit www.thesleepconsultant.com to learn more. My guest today is Brittany Ford, also known as Biohacking Brittany. Brittany is a holistic health nutritionist, helping people perform at their best by using the latest science, nutrition, biohacks, and natural remedies. Host of the Biohacking Brittany podcast, overcoming her own health journey, and sharing her insights regularly on social media, Brittany has a wide range of expertise to help people reach their highest potential and achieve long lasting well being. Brittany, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's really cool to have a guest on who's also located in my city, Vancouver, or at least that area. Usually it's people, you know, in Europe somewhere or the United States. So it's cool to have a, a guest close to home. But I guess, first of all, and the, the question I like to ask all my guests is, what got you into this this whole health thing? What was what was your origin story? Yeah, absolutely. So when I was younger, I had a bunch of health issues and mm. I kind of feel like most health practitioners kind of have this like similar journey. Mm. Um, but I had a bunch of health issues um, and at the time, I didn't really know what was causing them. And I went to my medical mm. doctor and essentially she was like, nothing's wrong with you. You know, your blood work is fine, all of that type of thing. And this was like when I was a teenager and mm. I knew that she wasn't right because yeah. I was dealing with certain symptoms that just didn't really make sense for yeah. the age that I was at. Okay. Um, and so I took it upon myself to go start seeing a naturopath and mm. through that naturopath really got exposed to this idea of healing naturally nutrition, um, holistic lifestyles. And, you know, we don't necessarily need to go into all of the health issues that I was dealing with, mm -hmm. but at the time there wasn't Instagram, there wasn't like this whole wellness yeah. movement yet. So mm -hmm. that was kind of my first, um, yeah, my first step into it. And, and mm -hmm. through working with that naturopath and then other people as well, I was able to heal some of the things I was dealing with and then just like fell in love with natural health in general. Amazing. So yeah, taking health into your own hands. I mean, you, you see that recurring story again and again, person has mm -hmm. a recurring health issue, conventional med medicine doesn't serve, take health into their own hands. Similar thing happened to me with Crohn's disease. Um, medication was making me feel worse. So went into the functional medicine and um, holistically within a year, just went into complete remission since. So it's, it's amazing what the power of some of this can do. And those things, those journeys become a blessing in disguise. I mean, looking back, I don't see, um, you know, doing anything any other way. Um, you know, the old days of looking at spreadsheets compared to what I'm doing now, especially a lot more meaningful. I'm sure the same for you and you've been on this journey a long time. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people kind of go through that thing where they trust their doctor and they try the medication and they try whatever the doctor says. Um, but then they have symptoms and signs and issues with the medication and other things like that. So yeah. I think everyone kind of is on their own journey and it just takes mm -hmm. people a while to figure out what works for them. And mm -hmm. I think healing like that is that in general, right? Like what mm -hmm. works for you today probably won't work for you in five years and yeah. didn't work for you five years ago. So that's yeah. why people call it like a health and healing journey is because it's always yeah. changing and you always have to be yeah. basically trying new things. Yeah, exactly. So fast forward to today, who are you primarily helping? What I know you're working with a lot of women with their health, and then maybe could you touch on what are some of the biggest health challenges that you're seeing women today dealing with? Yeah, so I think I am moving more into working with women and mm -hmm. the world of biohacking tends to be very, very like male focused naturally. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting now to see more and more women be open to it. 
There's more female practitioners in the space. There's more female led companies in the space. So we're kind of, we're getting more women from the general public who are saying like, I don't want to just be into wellness. Like I want to be into biohacking and I want to understand how to optimize my health, which is really kind of what defines biohacking, I would say, compared to just like general wellness and well-being. Um, And so when I work with women and when I've worked with women in the past, it's a lot of how do we optimize your female health? And it's very different from working with men because obviously women have different hormones. We have the menstrual cycle that we have to take into account all of the time. And so it's like, how do we optimize that, whether it's for fertility or pregnancy or postpartum or menopause, anything like that. So mm-hmm. a lot of the work that I've done and where I will be going as well in my business is going to be more centered around what makes women different and mm-hmm. how can we optimize the things that make us different so that we become healthier because it doesn't make sense to take a blueprint for all humans and apply it to women when women are just so different from men on a biological level. Yeah, no, it's completely true. And taking that cookie cutter approach, it's, you know, it works some of the time, like the top 10 Mm -hmm. things to do for this situation, but everybody's biology is so unique, especially with women, especially with hormones and all the, all the different variables that are going on. I think that's um, really cool and interesting. So when a, when a woman Mm -hmm. comes to see you and it's case by case, do you have a specific approach Mm -hmm. you bring, you bring them through, like, would you start with nutrition first or is it just completely customized based on them? Yeah, it depends. I think a lot of people that I talk to, and even if I just help people on my podcast or social media, Mm. a lot of people are already on their health journey. So they don't Mm. necessarily need a, you know, like low hanging fruit foundational stuff. It's more of people who are interested in the little things that still move the needle or they've tried so many things in the wellness space and Mm -hmm. nothing is working, nothing's working. Right. So it's very interesting when women come to that and Mm -hmm. or come to me about that and say like, Mm -hmm. if it's gut health or if it's sleep, even like I've tried all of these supplements and I've tried all of these hacks and nothing's working. And those are the most interesting cases because then it's like, we have to do a full overhaul of like, Mm -hmm let's sit down and talk about your lifestyle. Tell me everything that you do. Tell me your supplements. Tell me about, you know, your stress level and where you're at emotionally and all of these different things that impact you. Um, Because it's all connected, right? So so it does matter. Yeah, it's interesting with the body, how it's all one unit. It's it's like, I like the analogy of the Jenga puzzle. You can start pulling away these these Mm -hmm. Jenga pieces, but eventually the whole thing will come tumbling down. Mm -hmm. For everybody, it's different. It can manifest as poor sleep, low energy, a libido, like whatever that is, but to find that and going to the root cause, what's co- where, where that's coming from. But like you said, like those types of people who have followed a healthy diet, but yet they're still experiencing these issues, you really think you're going crazy. And that's why you do have to do an overhaul. You do have to go back to, you know, the foundations and then build back up from there. And then you can really identify where those things are. And then once you get, it's like a, a sniper like approach when you give the body what it needs, just healing becomes so much faster instead of this machine gun auto fire, like a supplement graveyard that people will collect or, you know, it just yeah. goes on and on. So it's, it's super important. I yeah. think. Um, I think like just to touch on that. Yeah. is like yeah. the idea of like quantifying yourself is also really big in biohacking. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, I've tried all of these things. Why is nothing working? And yeah. again, instead of just buying another random supplement, because mm-hmm. some influencer told you to buy it, yeah. you get tested, get your blood tested, get your microbiome mm-hmm. tested, or, yeah. you know, get an aura ring and start tracking your sleep and then understand your data and your yeah. metrics better. And then you can, you know, look at solutions. I think, mm-hmm. I think it's so easy to just kind of pick and choose random habits and not stick to them or random supplements or random diets and fads and trends. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the best results come from uh, personalized decisions based off Mm -hmm. of your data for sure. Yeah, completely. And you're just going to save so much money in the long run. Like you can, you can buy supplements for years or you can pay that heavier amount upfront, find out exactly what you need, and then just take that in an acute phase. And then you can kind of go into a maintenance mode after that. So super, super important and key stuff. And like you said, objectifying it, 
understanding the data and you can almost play a game with yourself, like whether it's the aura ring and the numbers trying to improve, improve your sleep mm -hmm. score and kind of taking, like becoming your own scientist, isolating the variables and having like a hypo hypothesis, like, okay, what is going on with my body right now? Why is it like, is my deep sleep low? Is my REM sleep low? Or is it, you know, my heart rate variability during the day, like my heart rate variability dropped when I had this kind of food and trying to correlate, mm -hmm. it becomes really interesting the, the more you dive into this stuff. But getting deeper yeah. into the biohacks, what are some of mm -hmm. your favorite biohacks for sleep? Yeah, yeah. Great question. So I started taking my sleep, sleep seriously mm -hmm. um, in 2019, I think it was. Yeah. And the reason I started taking it seriously was because I got the aura ring. Um, nice. and I, so I knew I wasn't sleeping well at the mm -hmm. time. Like I would wake up multiple times throughout the night, get up, go to the bathroom, come back, go to sleep. And I knew that wasn't good, but I had no idea actually the profound impact it was having on my health and on mm -hmm. my heart metrics. Right. So yeah. lower HRV, higher heart rate, um, lower deep sleep, lower REM sleep, all of these different things. And so when I got the aura ring and I started tracking it, I was like very surprised and shocked to see how significant it was. And so through that and through understanding kind of what was going on, that's when I started to make like these changes. So, mm. you know, I got the blue blocking glasses, which I think are so, so key for most people. Yeah. Um, and I have the ones that are like super red. There's like oh, the, orange the and yellow. Dark ones? Yes, I have the two dark ones. Um, they're very red. Like they look ridiculous, yeah. um, but they work. They mm -hmm. they really do work. And I put them on around like 7.30 at mm -hmm. night, like during the week, 7.30 around then. Um, I go to sleep at 9.30. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty strict about that. And then I also have red lights in my apartment. So all oh. of the lights turn off and it's only red in here. It looks, <laughs> it looks funny. It, it kind of looks, yeah, I'm on the street level too. So I always wonder what oh, people nice. think when they walk by, but, um, basically everything is red because blue light disrupts melatonin release in the body. Yeah. And we need melatonin to obviously help us calm down and help us sleep. So I'm really, really strict about that. And then, um, and even just like those two hacks in themselves made a significant increase on my sleep quality. Like yeah. I was able to fall asleep faster, stay asleep for longer. Um, and it really did work. And I, I'm sure you do like very similar things in terms of like blue light exposure. Yeah. Blue light's a very interesting one. It's so funny when mm -hmm. like I'll, I'll get those, those same glasses you get for all my clients. I mean, they're not fashionable. I mean, you do look like X-Men when you wear them, but it gets yeah. the job done. It's funny because the blue light will suppress the melatonin and they'll be mm -hmm. like, let's say their normal bedtime without the blue light blocking glasses for the last 10 years was like 10 or 11 PM. We'll pop those glasses on. And because they're not getting that, um, blue light in their eyes to suppress their melatonin, all of a sudden they're tired by like 8 PM and they don't know why. Mm -hmm. And so it takes them a second to, to adapt to that, but they, you know, the sleep quality improves, it reflects on their aura ring, um, and everything else that goes along with it. But I may have to take to the next step and start introducing some red lights in my, uh, in my apartment too, then. Yeah. I just find like the bright lights, even with the glasses, the bright lights are just, it's just a yeah. lot. Yeah. And also like, I think the data shows like if your eyes are lighter, then you're more sensitive to light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think you have blue eyes as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So do I. So, um, like my fiance, he has green eyes and he's also mm -hmm. sensitive, but people with darker eyes, it's not as much of an issue. So yeah. it really depends, but yeah, I also have like blackout curtains. I have, mm. it, it's just like a cave. I just yeah. want to sleep in a cave, yeah. <laughs> like essentially very yeah. dark um, and very cold as well. Mm. And then I sleep like a baby. So perfect. Yeah. I think that's the closer you get to the cave, the better you will sleep. And that's, yeah. that's really yeah. all it is. And it's really that simple. I mean, you can, you can go with mm -hmm. some of these gadgets like the chili pad and eight sleep and all these different things. And they do work to an extent, but get the low hanging fruit things dialed in first. Cause it's like Pareto's principle. I mean, you get 80% of the results with 10 20% of the work. And you, I mean, you just, you buy those things, you pop them on, you know, you can wear, mm -hmm. you know, um, software on your phone, like irisTech.co is really good. Flux is really good. And you can just have these running in the background that are just set on timers and you're, you're pretty much good to go after that. Um, I really yeah. like everything that you shared here. What are some of your favorite 
more maybe more on the advanced tech side. I was recently talking to the um, CEO of uh, Somavetic. Very interesting device. But mm -hmm. any anything else that you're kind of exploring these days with tech, biohacking, or maybe yeah. something that's not out yet that you're excited for? Yeah. So I have a Somavetic device. Um, mm. It's actually next to my TV. It's it's just on all of the time because I I do think it does help with EMF. Yeah. Um, but in terms of tech, like I, I actually haven't tried the chili pad or any cold sleeping pads. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I would look into. However, I recently started, and this is nice because it's free. Um, I recently started opening my bedroom window a few hours before I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then I close my bedroom door. Um, and it's obviously winter in Vancouver and Canada right now. So by the time I actually go to sleep, it's so cold in my bedroom, mm -hmm. but it's also so fresh. And yeah. I think that's the difference of like using a chili pad. It's like, yeah, you might be able to get it to like 68 degrees or whatever this like optimal sleep temperature is, mm -hmm. but you don't really necessarily get like the fresh air feel that you get from just leaving your window open. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I close my window when I go to sleep because it's too loud. It's also mm -hmm. really cold, but yeah this feels so good. Like yeah. I feel so cozy. You're like warm underneath your covers, but the air around you is like fresh and cold and I sleep mm -hmm. so much better. So yeah. I think with biohacking, um, I think it's easy to get caught up in tech and like the mm -hmm. latest, um, thing that you need to buy or product or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, the best biohacks are actually free and are actually yeah. just like based in nature. Yeah, super insightful, and it's 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 one of those things where it's so basic, and we just try to overcomplicate everything. Yeah. But it's always just going yeah. back to foundations. Really like that, Brittany. Mm -hmm. Any last words of wisdom for our listeners before we close things off today? Yeah, I would say if we're just talking about sleep, um, definitely experiment. Like you said, like experiment with the temperature of the room, with yeah. the light exposure, and with what you do before bed. Like if that's reading or taking a hot bath or a cold mm -hmm. shower just experiment and see what feels best for you. And it's okay if what feels best for you is different from what everyone else is saying, because yeah. if that makes you sleep really nicely and really well at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Exactly. If people want to learn more about you, where can they visit? Yeah, absolutely. So I am most active on Instagram at biohacking Brittany. Um, and my website is biohacking .com. Awesome. And we will put all that down in the show notes below. Thank you so much for coming on today. I learned a lot. I'm sure our listeners did as well. And we will speak again soon. And all right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you would like to learn more about how sleep can benefit your personal business life, visit thesleepconsultant.com. Until next time. Thanks for listening to the Sleep Experience Podcast. We'll see you next time on next week's episode. Be sure to subscribe and follow us to get future updates on everything sleep, energy, focus, stress, and better performance.